Solving this problem is certainly not going to make you the wolf of Wall Street. But yes, it will make you one step closer. Why is that so? Because it involves stocks, right? So you are given an array of integers where each element represents the price of a certain stock at a certain day, correct? And you have to maximize your profit. The only condition is that you are only allowed to buy the stock once and sell it once. You cannot have multiple transactions. So how do you go about solving this problem? Let us see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see why a brute force solution is not optimal and how do you go about attacking this problem. After that, we are gonna go for an efficient solution and then as usual, we will also try to do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an array whose elements represents the price at a certain day. So for example, I have this array, then all of these elements are determining the price of a certain stock at consecutive days. So what you can say is 7 is the price on Monday, then 1 is the price on Tuesday, 5 is the price on Wednesday and so on. They are in a consecutive manner, right? Now what do you need to do? You need to determine the maximum profit possible if you can buy and sell a stock only once. So what does that mean is you will buy a stock before you can actually sell it, right? So if you buy a stock at price 5, then you only have these 3 days to sell, right? And similarly, if you buy a stock at price 1, then you have all of these following days to sell the stock, correct? And for each of the day that you sell, you will have a certain different profit, correct? So if you're buying on the day when the price is 1, right? If you sell when the price is 5, then you have a profit of 5 minus 1, that is 4. If you sell when the price is 4, then the profit is 4 minus 1 and that is 3, correct? But you will get the maximum profit if you will buy at the price 1 and you sell at price 6, right? That will give you a profit of 5. And this indeed will be your answer, correct? So there could be a lot more cases when you can buy and sell a stock. For example, you can buy when the price is 3 and you can sell when the price is 6. That is still profit, right? But this profit will only be 3 because 6 minus 3, right? So given such an array, you need to determine the maximum profit possible. In all the other scenarios, the profit will be less than 5, correct? So those are not the answer. There is one more special case that if no profit is possible, then you have to return a 0. For example, in a test case number 2, you can see that as soon as I buy a stock at any day, when I move ahead, the price just keeps on going down, right? So there is no chance that you can make a profit at all. Suppose if you buy the stock at price 4, then when you move ahead, the price becomes 3 and then 1. Both of these values will give you a loss. So in this scenario, the maximum profit will be 0. And this indeed will be your answer. So now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free first to try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Okay, so let us say I have this sample array with me and I have to determine the maximum profit possible, right? So a couple of things about this problem. You can say that, okay, to maximize my profit, I can take up the largest value possible and the minimum value possible, right? That will give me the maximum profit, correct? 7 minus 1, that is 6. And this seems like the maximum profit. But there is a certain caveat. You cannot sell a stock before buying, right? So if you want to buy the stock at price 1, then you cannot go back in time to sell the stock at price 7, right? That will be invalid. So if you're buying a stock at price 1, then you can only sell it in the consecutive days or in the upcoming days, correct? So that is one thing that you must note about this problem while coming up with a solution. So if I ask you, okay, what is the brute force way or what is the most naive way that you can approach this problem? Then the most naive way to approach this problem would be that, okay, you start with one value and look up your entire array to determine, okay, what is the maximum profit? When you start with 7, you cannot find a higher value. That means with 7, the profit will be just 0, correct? Now, what you're going to do is you will start with 1 and then try to determine, okay, if I'm starting with 1 and I sell at 5, what is the profit? That is 4. If you sell at 3, what is the profit? That is 2. If I sell at 6, what is the profit? That is 5, right? And you will go on. And out of all of these values, you will determine that, okay, when I start with 1, then the maximum profit I can get is 5, correct? 
Similarly, what you will do is you will now start with 5 and then try to sell at all the consecutive values. With 5, you will be only be able to sell at 6 and that will give you a profit of only 1. So this way, you are going to go ahead with each of the value and then ultimately at the end, you will look at what is the maximum profit that you could get. The maximum profit possible would be 5, right? And this indeed will be your answer. But do you see the problem with this approach? In this problem, you are iterating through the entire array again and again, so many times. And that will waste your time. Think about it. What happens if I add more elements to this number? 19, 20, 17, 8, right? It will go on. And then you will end up comparing so many values again and again, and that will take up your time. So certainly, you need to think about an efficient approach to solve this problem. What can you do about it? Okay, so this time I have a larger array, right? Because that is what we were trying to optimize from the brute force approach, correct? And when you're trying to attack such problems, the best way is to go step by step. Rather than looking at the entire problem at once, try to break it down. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to forget everything and I will just start with the first day itself. So on the first day, when I wake up, I see that, okay, the price of the stock is 7. So what can I do? I can either choose to buy the stock at this price or not, right? Okay, let's say I'm buying the stock at the current price and that is 7. So that is my buy price. And I cannot sell this stock yet, right? Because if I buy it at 7, sell it at 7, I will have no profit, right? So my current profit will be 0. And that is indeed the maximum profit I can have right now. So I am taking one more variable that is maximum profit and it will eventually store what is the maximum profit you can have at the very end. But just focus step by step. So now what happens? You sleep and now the next day the price of the stock changes to 2. So okay, this looks like an even lower price. And to get a higher profit, you will want to buy the stock at a lower price, correct? So what I will do is, I will say that okay, I do not want to buy the stock at price 7 and indeed I will buy the stock at price 2 because this is a lower price. But you still cannot sell it. Sure, the price of the stock was 7 in the past. So you cannot go back in the past. You need to wait for some time in the future that okay, maybe the price increases and then you can get a profit. So right now, your current profit will still remain 0 and indeed your max profit will also remain 0. But hey, you were able to get a lower buying price, correct? That could be good. Now, just move ahead. You sleep once again, and then on the next day when you wake up, okay, the price of the stock is 4. Things are looking good now. So, what happens? You bought the stock at a price of 2. So, you will not update your buy price because it's greater. But now, you can sell your stock. And if you sell your stock right now, what is the profit that you will get? The profit you will get is 4 minus 2, and that will be a profit of 2. Correct? And currently, this will be your max profit as well. So right now, what is happening? You bought the stock at price 2 and then in the future, you are selling it at price 4. So this means you got some profit. Okay, now just move along. What would have happened? You say that, okay, you sleep again and next day when you wake up, the price of the stock changes to 5. Wow, this is even better. So the buy price will still remain 2 because you bought it at price 2 there was not a lower price possible. And what is the profit if you are selling the stock at price 5? The new profit will be 3, right? 5 minus 2. And then what is your maximum profit? You will compare your current profit and the maximum profit. You can see that 3 is greater than 2. So what I'm going to do is, I will simply replace this value with my new profit and that is 3. Now just move along. You sleep again and the next day you see that, okay, the price of the stock is 1. So, okay, the price of the stock fell down and you once again cannot go back in the past. But what you will do is, you will say that, okay, I'm just going to store this price because it could be possible that in the future, the price increases because this is a much lower price, right? And think about it. If the problem just stopped over here, you only had these many values available. This was your maximum profit, right? And now what we're going to do is, we will wait and we will see the problem to expand. So the next day when you wake up, you see that, okay, the price of the stock is now 3. So once again, you will not update your buying price because 1 is the lowest value that you could get. And what is your profit? You will compare 1 and 3. Your new profit will be 2, right? And now you will decide, okay, is my new profit greater than the maximum profit I had? No, right? So you are going to keep your value of the maximum profit. 
you will not update it. So you see what is happening over here. If your array was only this much, then what is the maximum profit you could get? That was three. And that was attained if you bought it at two and sold it at five. Correct? So what is happening over here? You're doing kind of a memoization. And this indicates dynamic programming. You are taking all the values as you're getting along and then updating all your results. So this is how a solution is getting formed. Let us move ahead now. You sleep again and the next day you see the price is six. You will not update your buying price because that is the minimum. But this time, what is your profit? Your profit will be six minus one and that is five. And once again, you will compare your current profit with the max profit. This time, the current profit is greater than three. So I'm just going to update my value of maximum profit. Right now, moving along to the last element and that is four. You will not update your buy price because that is the minimum. Going forward to calculate the current profit. Your new profit will be four minus one and that is three. Now you compare your current profit and the max profit and five is still greater. So you do not change this value. So now you see that you have traversed the entire array and you got your value of the maximum profit. Right. And you see how we were able to do just one iteration of the array. And at every instance, we know that, okay, this is my maximum profit. So what we're kind of doing here is we're finding the maximum profit so far. This is also an example of the Cadence algorithm. There is a video that I have talked about with one more problem and you can find the link in the description below. But for now, let us try to do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement the solution. And on the right, I have this sample array with me that is passed in as an input parameter to the function max profit. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving ahead with a dry run, what do we first do? First of all, we set the buy price and the buying price will be the first value of the array. That is seven, right? Because we have to start somewhere. So this will be my buy price. And at the beginning, I can sell only at the initial value, right? So my profit will be also zero, right? And this will also be my maximum profit right now because I have no other values to compare from. Now, moving along with a dry run, what do we do? We start a for loop from the first value all the way up to the end. So I'm going to start from here and then keep moving along day by day, right? And what do I do? I check if my new price is less than the original brine price that I already have. So my new price is one. And is this less than the original buy price that I have? Yes. So I will update this value. And then using this buy price, what I'm going to do is I will try to calculate my profit. Right now, this profit will not update, but when I move to value five, this will give me a profit five minus one. And that is four, right? And whenever you're getting a profit, I just do a math dot max that will compare the current profit with the maximum profit I have. And at the very end, once this for loop completes, I will return this maximum profit and that will be my answer, right? The time complexity of this solution is order of n because we traverse through the array only once and the space complexity of this solution is order of one because we do not take any extra space to arrive at a solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that this problem is just the beginning when it comes to problems on stocks. For example, in this problem, you were only allowed to buy once and sell once. There can be many other variations of the same problem where you are just tweaking between things. You are allowed to have multiple transactions. You do not know what is happening in the future. You cannot go in the past to change your transactions and so on and so forth. So while going through this problem, did you face any problems? Have you found any other problems that work on the same idea? Did you find more problems that are working around stocks? I know that on lead code, there are more problems where you buy and sell stock and there are one, two, three, four, a total of four parts, right? And certainly I will be making more videos on that. But right now, just let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to such problems is also available on our website studyalgorithms.com. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what you want to learn next. Until then, see ya!